to say that people who are locked up become inhuman, their actions have been inhuman. And for them to be locked up, they're, they're just, there's, what, what other way can you do it? These people that use their weapons and that, you get far more severe sentences. And get them all the hard day where it's going. The best thing can do really is to bring back conscription. It will not only solve the problem of unemployment, but it'll get all the young terriers off the streets. As far as I'm concerned, you pass legislation and one man to yourself. They're getting their bed and breakfast for nothing. I've no personal first-hand knowledge of prisons, but I presume there's a need for a sort of deterrent, but they don't seem to be altogether satisfactory insofar as it seems to be almost a revolving door. When prisoners are received from police custody, they are classified by age and previous conviction. Untried to the left, convicted to the right. Give me a full name and sentence. John Brown, four months, sir. After documentation, he is placed behind this screen where he steps off and hands over his personal belongings. He is then taken for a shower. After the prisoner has a shower, he is medically examined and put to the resident hall of his classification. cell you've been allocated, you'll be required to keep it clean and tidy at all times. There's a rule book furnished for your assistance. Any more problems, contact me. Arlini, Scotland's largest prison. Its governor, Mr Mackenzie. Mr Mackenzie, why in this day of our so-called enlightened society do we still need establishments like Berlini? Because people are bad. And uh, they're required to be in prison. And that's basically it. It's as simple as that. Yes. The attitude of society to prisons is um, changing very much. Do you tend to reflect these uh, changes and attitudes, or do you tend to react against them? Not at all. Not at all. It is entirely necessary that we keep pace with modern society. Other institutions change, and uh, so does prison. Yes. And uh, I should hope change for the better. From what I've seen, Mr. Mackenzie, you run a tight, well-disciplined prison. Do you have to brook any interference from outside agencies? Not really. Uh, I have no interference from any department as far as the day-to-day -day management of the prison is concerned. Of course, it's got to be borne in mind that I've got to run the prison in accordance with prison rules as laid down by Parliament. Yes, I see. The vast majority of the ordinary people that we spoke to before coming here said that they'd like to see harsher measures taken in prison. Would you agree with this? No, not at all. Um, you'll never get anywhere by harsh measures in prison. What one has to do is to have a well-balanced institution whereby men are given the opportunity to think for themselves, give them as much training as we possibly can. And the harshness is, of course, when a man is sent to prison and gives up his freedom and liberty. People outside have the impression that all prisoners do is sit around all day sewing mailbags. Is this the case? 
Not at all. Uh, a section of the prison do. And we've got to bear in mind that uh, a proportion of men coming into prison hasn't got the intelligence to carry out a full-skill job such as engineering and so on. Yes. And these um, are the men who do the mailbags? Yes, so yes. We are very anxious to improve and uh, increase our, our industrial side of prison life. Behind me is the industrial complex of Berlin Prison, for which I am responsible as manager. My functions are as general manager of all the various aspects of production, planning, training of all the prisoners in Berlin Prison. We have a number of workshops spanning the general aspect of industry outside, from concrete, joinery, textiles, etc. The total value expenditure on materials and articles produced in this prison run in the region of almost a million, million pound per year. Number five shed, industrial officer Jay McNellis. There are 200 prisoners in this party, which is known as an allocation party. Every prisoner is allocated from this party to other parties where they are best suited. They are also fingerprinted in this party before being dispatched to their other parties. in this party consists of repairing mailbags for the GPO and also for sewing on handles onto new mailbags which are called tabs and from then they are then dispatched from this party to various warehouses. The type of prisoner kept in the allocation party for all of their sentence are uh, the dropouts from society, alcoholics, uh, epileptics, sex offenders and also the type of prisoner that's doing, say, two pound or five days, it can't afford to pay a two pound fine. Well, this is a, a prison for a allocation prison, you see. And uh, my opinion is this, that they, they don't seem to, uh, I was what I would say, they don't seem to um, care for you more than any other, what they do in any other prison. But that, that being this allocation prison, yeah. that's, that's the reason being, I suppose, uh, when I was in Peterhead, well, they do go to the road for it to help you in every way and try to make, 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 make your time much easier for you. Well, the staff and the, the governors up there yeah. do. Uh, and this you feel, feel a man really gets punished when he comes to Berlin. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Aye. Oh, yes. Aye. He knows he's doing time when he visits in Berlin prison. Yeah. <laughs> this is a joinery section where all types of furniture are made, roof trusses, etc., and all sorts of prison uh, furniture, tables, chairs, furniture for prison officers, and a variety of stuff for the prison department, play groups, etc. We, we have a problem with security, and all the tools are checked twice a day on boards with shadow boards, and each one is placed on the shadow, so it's obvious if a tool is missing. What did you think of the, the um, prison officers and so on as you arrived? I mean, did you feel you were in for a hard time or what? Well, I'd have been in for a hard time right enough, so I didn't know what prisons were like, really. Yeah. Just going by what I'd heard outside about prisons, yeah. but they were terrible places to be in. Is it a terrible place to be in? Oh, well, I wouldn't like to come back again. Did you have a trade when you were outside? Yes. You had? What were you? Student nurse. We employ about 80 prisoners a year making mats. The types we have are more or less recidivists, between 21 and 30. It's all government contracts, and we turn out roughly 250 mats per week. You've nothing in here, this is just like a big, a big model. It's just, just a place to put you. Uh, if you're doing a big sentence, you get transferred to another prison, right? Well, they don't cater for anybody here. I mean, they've got you locked up all weekend, whereas in other prisons they haven't. I think they should give you more, uh, let you out your cell more. I mean, I've heard, at the weekend in the hall I'm in, I've heard men cranking up. 
I've heard them slashing their wrists. True, been locked up for four o'clock on a Saturday night, right to the next morning, by the way. And it's the same on a Sunday. No, uh, some of them try to hang yourself, and others just scream and batter their heads off the wall. I don't know how those people outside the wall don't hear us. There's one thing you'll never get in jail, sympathy. I'm afraid that's out. The laundry employs about 40 men, serving a population of about 2,000 prisoners. The output is around two and a half tons of dry washing per day, 35,000 items per week. The inmates get a change of clothing about once a week. Mr. Black, Military officer in charge of Textiles Party. We are, at the moment, we are in the process of manufacturing mail bags, kit bags for the Army, kit bags for the Navy, cook's hats for the Army, and uh, various postal work. We have very, very few discipline problems in this party because we are the main production party in Berlin Prison. I should know by then, when I'm 26 years of age, what I'm doing, but as I said, I was drunk and I had a fight with a fella. And that was it, you know? About 12 months. It was a entirely my own fault as far as I'm concerned, you know? Mm -hmm. And this time, drunk again, singing. Go down the street, jail. Breach of the peace, three months. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was unfair at the time, you know? But uh, the police said I was trying to fight, and uh, no, they kind of mm -hmm. put their story, mm -hmm. mix it a wee bit, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, my wife definitely didn't like it. Mm. Look at it that way, you know. Mm. And I think I just about my last legs if I don't watch what I'm doing. At 11:45 a.m. each day, the officers line the route from the work area to the dining hall. Then, shed by shed, the 1,500 men are called to lunch. Right. number three, send them on. Right. What do you think of the food in the line? It's not much caught. I saw some of the food today, and to me it looked good. And I think I had basically what um, the prisoners had. And I didn't think it was a bad meal at all. You're not know, eating that every day, but... A lot of the stuff that's served up here I don't eat outside. Oh, I'll, I'll give the cookies due, the, the chief cookie. This is his best. He's put some, some nice wee dishes at times there. And you can tell what you're going to get every day. Mr. Williams, how important is diet to a prison? Uh, if the food is good and the variety is good, the jail and the prison run smoothly. Yes. Do you do any special diets, sir? Uh, diabetics, uh, vegetarians, uh, milk diets and so forth. I see. Ask the medical officer advice. Is food considered part of a punishment element for prisoners? Well, for the past 14 years, uh, I don't remember a, a punishment diet of any sort. After lunch, the inmates are taken to the yard for one hour's exercise. Then it's back to work till 4 p.m. Harleney Prison was built during the years 1880 to 1886. Although the cell blocks remain essentially the same today as when originally erected, many alterations and improvements have been made over the years. Sometimes this marks a change of emphasis in the treatment of inmates. The hospital is a case in point. Dr. Anderson, Chief Medical Officer. How do you assess the general level of fitness of prisoners coming into the prison? Well, on admission, fair. Now, you have a hospital here. What facilities and staff do you have? The total staff of the surgery is uh, 24, but we're understaffed at the moment. We have only 20. Yeah. Uh, we have um, 14 beds in the sick ward and 16 in the psychiatric ward. Yes. So you see anything from 60 to 80 uh, patients a day. How effective can you be in this case? Uh, I think with the prisoners who are really ill, we, we can be very effective. But with the ordinary run, um, 
The ordinary run of prisoners require very little treatment in yes. the main. What special facilities do you have for psychiatric treatment? Well, we have the war for uh, ob purposes of observation, and we also have um, visiting psychiatrists who can uh, assist us in the management of prisoners. Yes, but you can't carry out any uh, psychiatric treatment as such? Only in a minor way. In Anything minor way. major would require to go to an outside yes. hospital. Do you ever conduct any controlled physical tests or measurements on for your own information? We haven't, no. No? None at all? No. Okay, fine, thank you. In this ward, we can handle most medical and minor surgical cases. Any major surgical case is normally transferred to the nearest local hospital. Uh, a prisoner who becomes mentally disturbed uh, can be transferred under the Mental Health Act to a mental hospital where he will receive the appropriate treatment. We have a small pantry here where meals are prepared, served, bathroom, toilet, um, records office far upstairs, and five medical cells. On the other side of the gate, we have the untried ward and the observation ward. This is kept for uh, prisoners who are waiting reports from the pocket at fiscal. We have two strong cells here for patients who uh, could be violent or suicidal. Yes. They are kept here under strict observation. Some of these patients can be quite disturbed and violent. We have two of these cells. Uh, the word is observed from here by Mr. Coffey. Second record, 10 on try, 12 all correct, sir. What are your duties consist of here, Mr. Coffey? My duties consist of general observation of the patients in the day room and making daily reports on their general behaviour. Yeah. Mr. Tate, do you think that prison is a suitable place for cases of mental illness or mental subnormality? Well, if a man is neurotic, he just has to be contained here. If he's psychotic, he will be certified and sent to a proper mental hospital. But you do have convicted prisoners here who are mentally subnormal? We do have, yes. yes. Thank you, Mr. Day. Mr. MacDonald, prison security has largely stamped out the instance of weapons like these among prisoners. Um, what percentage of these actual weapons have been used in crimes? Oh, approximately 1%. Approximately 1%. Yes. Is this on prison officers or other prisoners? No, uh, mainly on other prisoners. Yes. A very few assault states. Why does a prisoner feel it necessary to arm him with himself with a thing like this? More for his defence uh, against others than attack. Yes. Yet there still are breaches of discipline. How are these dealt with? These are dealt with by the governor uh, who holds an orderly room in the prison every morning at approximately 10.30. Lasher, quick march. Give your full name and sentence to the government. James Lasher, four months, sir. Lasher, you are here charged with offending against good order and discipline. That is, destroying prison property. A library book and the evidence against you is by James McMahon. Evidence, please. Governor, sir, while searching this inmate's cell on the third flat B hall, at approximately 10.30, I found a prison library book with the pages torn out. On questioning the inmate, he denied the charge. I had no alternative but place the inmate on your report, sir. You have the evidence, uh, Asher. Have you got anything to say on your own behalf? It was accidental, sir, and there were two or three pages loose. I didn't think it was well reporting to the officer, sir. Was the writing at the back of the book also accidental? The writing was on there, sir. You made it before the book was handed to you? Yes, sir. Well, books are expensive, and we have to pay for them, and uh, you will have to pay for this book, which will cost you uh, the minimum of five shillings and you are also severely reprimanded. Then come, please march. Oh. 
Do you believe in God, John? I definitely do. I go to church every Sunday. I'm in the choir and everything. We're in the choir. Commandments, etc. No, they're for rich men. They're for their protection. That's as far as I'm concerned. You do a sin, you say, well, suppose you, you pray to God, say, well, I hope I never come back. Who appoints you, Mr. Johnson? I'm appointed by the Scot Scottish Home and Health Department on the recommendation of the Home Board of the Church of Scotland. Yes. And you, Father? Well, I am recommended by the Archbishop of Glasgow. Yes, on the same... On the same basis. Yes, yes. I see. Um, do you work office hours? Well, I have two colleagues. There are three Church of Scotland ministers here, so we're here most every morning, really, during the week and other times as required. Yes. Well, I'm on my own here, but I have no parochial commitments at all. So um, you're totally committed totally to the prison? To the prison. Yes. Um, can a prisoner come to you in complete confidence? He can, yes, always. This is one of the things that's understood in the situation here and can talk quite freely. Yes. And he sees you privately? He sees, sees us privately. There is never anyone else present, unless he wishes someone else to be present, but in most cases, yes. no. Yes. If he does, of course, have a problem in which he needs further guidance, we try to give this to him and recommend how he can get help. And sometimes yes. when he asks it, we pass it on to other agencies in the prison or outside. Yes, so you can act as a link with we the do. outside Yes, part. this is a very yes. important part of our work, yes. I think. How would you help a prisoner who is really overcome with loneliness? Well, I think what, what would happen is that, first of all, he's looking for a shoulder to cry on. Yes. Mainly someone to talk to, and after all, I mean, we are trained listeners, and uh, the mere fact that you listen to his troubles certainly eases it for him. And in complete confidence. In complete confidence, we find that just being there and letting a man talk and work through his problems of readjustment, especially if this is his first time in prison, is again part of our job, yes. which we hope is, is useful, and we find that after a few days a man does work through this awful loneliness of the beginning yes. and becomes adjusted to yes. it. How effective can you be in your ministry, Father? Well, it's difficult to measure this. Uh, for the most part, uh, the ones that who are coming back, I suppose you would call them our failures, the ones who don't come back, we're not even sure that they're not in trouble elsewhere because they could be in some other yes. prison. Yes. Do you find the same thing? Mr. Yes, it's always very difficult. I think in the ministry generally it's very difficult to measure success in any kind of ordinary terms. We just say that we do our, our best. We're very happy to be representatives of the church in this very limited sphere. Yes. And occasionally we do find the, the odd case where men will come and feel that they have been helped while they've been in prison. But in most cases we carry on, hopefully, as it were. Yes. Do you find this a very different ministry from outside? Well, I wouldn't think so. I mean, after all, the, the troubles which you, you're coming across here, domestic problems, the difficulty with their wives, with paying rent and so on, I wouldn't get exactly the same outside. I mean, people would come to me outside for help with domestic problems, yes. just the same way as they yes. come here. The difference, of course, is that the man is not able to do anything himself, whereas outside he can. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes I agree with this wholeheartedly. This yes. is a position that little problems which a man can easily cope with in the outside world, of course, he's unable to do so yes. while he's here, so we help in some kind of measure as a link, an advisory yes. service. Fine, thank you very much indeed. Good evening. This, as you will see, is our recreation room in the prison and all prisoners who are serving sentences of six months and more are eligible for recreation. They must serve two months prior to uh, being accorded the privilege of recreation, uh, but thereafter they have approximately seven hours of recreation per week.
Some may say, what good does recreation do? Well, of course, if a man is serving a prison sentence and he works during the day, it's only fair and reasonable, reasonable to expect him to have some form of recreation in the evenings. Furthermore, when numbers are small in a recreation room, it is an important aspect of an officer's job to indulge in a game of billiards or a game of table tennis or a game of cards and try to get to know the prisoner a wee bit better. This may help to solve some of his problems and it promotes a much better relationship between staff and prisoners. Mr. Mackenzie, are there any circumstances under which you would seek permission to pardon a convicted prisoner? Yes. Uh, if a prisoner went to the assistance of a member of the staff being attacked, or if he took steps to prevent property being destroyed, or anything in that nature, I'd be very willing to put forward a case, uh, a claim on his behalf. Yes. Is there any way that you can improve public relations? Yes, doing what you're doing. Coming in here and seeing for yourselves what the prison is like and taking it out to the public for themselves to see and judge. Yes. After 30 years in the prison service, what do you see for the future, sir? I see a very exciting time ahead. There's a tremendous lot to be done to improve conditions uh, all around penology. And I should hope that with science and various aids coming forward that one day prisons would be empty.